Something weird happens when you freeze sparkling water, and this led me to try it in a bunch of different containers to observe the process more clearly, and to try to understand exactly what's going on. And no, this wasn't even originally an idea I had for a video, but last summer I was feeling guilty about pounding way too many popsicles, and since I love sparkling water, I figured I should try to make a bubbly popsicle to satisfy my love for ice. I wasn't sure if these popsicles would come out bubbly at all since the process of freezing does force out the carbonation, but when I took it out, these frozen sparkling water popsicles did leave reminders of its carbonated past through these tiny frozen in place bubbles. That's neat, but it wasn't the cool thing I observed that inspired this video. As I made my final bites into the popsicle, despite my dentist's apprehension, I noticed that the final bite was much easier and there ended up being an empty pocket at the base of the popsicle. I thought this was interesting and rushed to the rest of the batch to confirm this wasn't a fluke, and sure enough, it wasn't. I really wanted to watch this freezing process in a time lapse, so I got a few more popsicle molds, this time they're clear, to test it out. I figured the outer part was freezing first, which creates an enclosed rigid container with liquid bubbly water still releasing carbon dioxide in the middle. That gas would then accumulate towards the top and create the pocket. The time lapse of the small popsicles showed that one of the handles seemed to pop off. It was a time lapse, I don't have many frames, but this frame shows it somewhat airborne. However, when I opened it up, I was surprised to find that neither of these new clear popsicle molds produce the same result. I think they're either too small or too rigid, unlike the original, which was quite flexible. I tried adding food dye to the original mold to hopefully see it better, and I froze them without the handle to see if the popsicle sticks were important. The bubbles look especially cool with the dye, but more importantly, the pocket was still there. It was at this point that I realized something obvious, which was that I didn't need to use popsicle mold as the container. So I decided to try this with a larger plastic cup that's still somewhat flexible. Once this cup was frozen and I took it out, I saw some interesting freezing lines toward the top that I was excited to open up. The extra volume of this mold could make for a monster pocket, which would be really cool. It ended up being a bit of a challenge to cut this one open the way I wanted, so I ultimately had to bring out the vise and quickly saw through it before too much melting occurred. The cut almost went through cleanly and now the moment of truth, but the result was pretty heartbreaking. Nothing. I wanted to see these cup sized molds in the freezing process, so I picked some clear cups up to try. Right at the beginning, I did notice a large pocket start to accumulate, but the pocket ended up collapsing over time. Cutting these open, I didn't think there would be any remaining pockets, but the smaller one did have a pocket as you can see here. On the larger one, I first cut towards the bottom of the cup to see if there was anything going on down there, and I did notice a few holes, likely channels for CO2 to flow up as it froze. Cutting the rest down the middle and it sort of broke off, but I was still able to see a pocket. This time it was a double layered pocket with just a thin layer of ice separating them. Without any clear leads, I figured why not try to get some more data, so I tried a few other sizes and some weird shapes. I even put mesh on top of the one on the right to see if that somehow did something unique. Looking at that one, you do see a layer of ice form towards the top, but that doesn't stop liquid from moving up as it expands. That layer of water above freezes, and then more liquid moves up, and then freezes, and this cycle continues, which creates those interesting looking layers towards the top. The two small ones didn't show much, but the plastic bottle was also a bit interesting. It obviously spilled out, but then towards the end, the spilling stopped, and the whole thing was stretched out. Unsurprisingly, the small one did have a small pocket, and after a brief delay messing around with just how cold this ice becomes, which you definitely shouldn't do, I sawed it open and it broke too much to see if there was actually a pocket. I attempted to assemble the pieces and I think there was a pocket, but I'm not 100% sure. The plastic tall bottle had a cool hole towards the top, but I'm going to skip this one and the mesh jar to keep things moving since I didn't learn anything from those. I also tried a plastic champagne glass to see if the curved walls would change anything, and there was a pretty good sized pocket, but nothing too groundbreaking. I did want to try some enclosed containers, but first I wanted to try one last thing, which was a clear rigid glass face that was also quite thin. I was hopeful that this glass being so thin would help me see the process better. This whole process was quite beautiful to observe in a time lapse. There's a clear layer of ice that forms towards the top, and then the outside starts to freeze, which forms that sealed container that I was talking about earlier. The bubbles in the liquid center do rise and some gets trapped below the ice, but once again, those pockets of CO2 keep escaping. This process continued and as the ice expands, water still gets pushed above the top layer of ice. It was quite frustrating to see all the gas escaping when I really wanted it trapped below the water to create a giant pocket. Trying to thaw the ice was also difficult for this annoying shape. I accidentally forgot about it for a while, so it melted quite a bit, and even then I had a heck of a time getting it out. I forced it a bit too much, and the vase was unfortunately sacrificed. I kept pushing through though, and it did ultimately get out, and when I cut through the block, there were no signs of a pocket anywhere, which meant I was done using rigid containers that are also open. So next I tried a balloon, which should expand with the water as it freezes. I also placed a sealed can just to see what would happen. 
The balloon ballooned up as it froze, and the can also expanded until the ice expanding was too much and a hole burst through. If you've ever accidentally frozen a soda can, you probably knew this was going to happen. I wondered what such a small opening in the can would mean for the ice inside, so I went ahead and unpeeled the can. This unpeeling was incredibly satisfying, and once I finally got to the frozen water inside, it looked so smooth and appetizing. Cutting through it though, and there wasn't much to work with. The balloon, however, surprised me. The whole thing felt pretty light, but I wasn't expecting to feel it hard at the top. I carefully cut the balloon and unpeeled it to find something that looked like a ball. It felt pretty fragile, so I carefully cut it open and checked this out. Oh. There was an absolute monster of an air pocket, by far the largest thus far, despite only using a small amount of liquid. Naturally, I had to try a bigger one and got some that were clear to hopefully see things better. It was wonderful to watch this one balloon up as it froze, but I think that air bubble at the beginning was a bit too large for it to freeze around the outsides. When I took it out, it wasn't completely hard on top. Unpeeling the balloon, this one was quite cold, and I found a cave. This is a pretty good sized cave, but I can't classify it as a pocket since it's not sealed. I was quite frustrated with how difficult it is to see what's happening towards the final stages of freezing since the outer layer becomes opaque. However, I did want to try one more thing, which was enclosed rigid containers with varying levels of water. I tried filling four Gatorade bottles with different levels of water and froze them. They all came out a bit puffy, and the first two resulted in what you'd expect. The third one was the most interesting. As soon as it was opened, the Gatorade bottle let out a mini number two, or at least I don't know how else you would classify this. The fourth bottle was filled up too much and the pressure had already been released through the seal. Scaling up to a two liter soda bottle that I'll leave partially filled and it made me realize another reason that pockets won't form, which is that most of the carbonation can already be released by the time it freezes as you can see here. After watching it back I knew this meant there was no chance of a pocket being here but I opened it up anyway and the plastic retracting was quite loud. I removed the plastic and decided to open it up regardless since I'd already frozen it and I'm so glad I did because although there wasn't a pocket, when I was messing around by cutting it, I noticed my favorite thing of this whole video, which was that the ice was popping. Why is it popping like that? It's popping. This is crazy. I think the mini bubbles inside are freezing at a higher pressure, so as it melts, that's getting released, but I'm honestly not entirely sure, so let me know in the comments what you think. I don't know what I expected when I started experimenting with this, but I'm completely out of ideas and this video has taken way too long already, so I guess I'm going to end it here. I wish I had some better takeaways, but hopefully you enjoyed this video regardless. Thanks for watching to the end, and I'll see you next time.